Should you pay your credit card off in full? Is it good to do so? Bad? How's it going to affect your credit score? And if you do pay it off, do you still use it and continue to pay it off each month? Do you cut up your card and get rid of it? How many cards are you supposed to have? And what is the best way to pay it off? That's what we'll be answering in today's video. Let's go. So let's get right to it. Is it a good idea or a bad idea to pay off your card in full? This is an easy one. It's an excellent idea. Very, very good. And I'll explain why. So credit cards, as you know, are a little bit different to most loans or other forms of credit in that, that they're an open line of credit, which means you can continuously put things on your card and there's no end date. There is a minimum balance, but there's no set amount of payments that you have to make. You just have to make the minimum payment. As long as you carry a balance on your card, you're going to continue to be paying it. You will be paying interest forever, basically, unless you pay the card off. I did a video on this recently that showed that if you had a balance of $5,000 on your credit card and you only paid the minimum balance, that it would take you 33 years to pay off and you would have paid around $17,000 in extra interest. You end up paying quite a significant amount over the base cost of whatever you purchased in the first place. So what happens when you pay off your credit card and you're no longer paying that interest and you're no longer paying the payments, you freed up income that you can use for other things, for building wealth or for creating savings or just for using your money more wisely. Now, whether you want to stop using your card after you've finished using it and get rid of it, we'll be talking about that in a minute, or whether you continuously use your card but continuously pay it off each time so you're never paying interest, there are different methods that you can use as long as you are paying it off in full and never paying that interest. So how does paying off your card affect your credit score? Now, credit scores are calculated a little bit differently in Australia than they are in the US. They're not used as much here in Australia. Mainly, they're only used when you're actually borrowing. Whereas in the US, the credit score is more important and it is used by a vast number of different organizations. But in both places, to get a good credit score, you need to actually be paying off any credit that you have. So there's a bit of a myth that keeping a low balance on your credit card or on any loan is going to be beneficial to your credit score. And that is actually not true. Taking out some credit and then paying Paying it off quickly over the minimum balance is actually going to be more beneficial for your credit score than keeping that balance over the long term. So you want to be paying it off. That's actually going to be more beneficial than keeping a balance. And if you're the type of person that has a credit card but uses it consistently and pays it off in full consistently, that's actually going to be really beneficial to your credit score because it shows how good you are at paying off your debts. So now you know the benefit of paying off your card in full, you know that it's going to free up income that you can use to either pay off other debts or build your savings or put it into investments if that's what you want. It's going to eliminate those interest payments so you're not paying all that unnecessary interest back to the bank and it's going to improve your credit score. But what's the best way to go about paying off that card if you haven't done so already? The best way to pay off a credit card or any sort of debt is to choose one to focus on and pay the minimum on the rest. That works whether you're using a debt snowball or a debt avalanche. It doesn't work so well when you're paying even amounts on everything, which I've shown is not the best way to go about it. You really need to be focusing on one of the debts. I've done a video in the past where I went over different methods of paying off credit cards if you had multiple debts, and that was either using a debt snowball, a debt avalanche, or just paying an even balance on each of the cards. Now, I've shown that the fastest way is using a debt avalanche, which is where you're paying the highest interest rate first. Paying the highest interest rate card first and cutting out that highest interest debt will mean that you're going to free up money quicker that you can then spread over your other debts. And once that card has finally been paid off, yay, then you would choose the next highest interest rate debt or card that you have. And then you just keep going down until all your debts are eliminated. But maybe that's not the best method for you. It's certainly going to be the fastest and it's going to be the one that will save you the most money long term because you're paying off the highest interest rates first. But perhaps you have some debts that you just mentally want to get rid of or you have a multitude of debts that you just want to eliminate how many of the debts that you have. It's not always about the best financial method. It's also about the most beneficial to your mindset on getting rid of the debt overall. Some people thrive on numbers and so the highest interest rate and getting rid of all of the debts fastest is the best way, but other people get overwhelmed by the amount of debt or the amount of cards that they have. So picking off those small balances first might be the better way for them. 
not the fastest way, not the way that they'll pay the least interest, but the best way for their mindset and to feel better about their debts overall. But if you have no real preference and you just want to know which one to do, I'd probably recommend going the debt avalanche, which is paying the highest interest rate first. So you need to make paying off debt a priority, meaning that's going to be your sole focus to get rid of the balance on the card. If you have one card, that's going to be easy. That's going to be your focus. But if you have more than one card, you need to decide which one you're going to focus on first. So if you have more than one card, make a list, choose which one you're going to pay off first and prioritize that. So if you're going to pay your card off in full, you need the money to do so. There's two ways that you can get that money. The easiest is looking at your budget and seeing where you can reduce spending so you can free up income to use on paying off the card. Or the alternative is to find extra money through, say, a side hustle, an extra job. You could sell some of your unwanted goods, but finding that extra money to pay off the card in full so that you wipe the balance, that should be your priority. So I always think that you should start with trying to cut back your spending. We often don't need as many things as we buy anyway. And cutting back on your spending is going to have a flow on effect anyway, because then you're not spending as much on your credit card long term so it's going to be easier to pay off in full each time. So have a look at your budget and see where else you can cut back and start putting as much money as you can onto that debt to get rid of it. Pay it off as fast as possible. So yes let's say that you've gone ahead you've paid off your credit card do you cut it up or do you keep it? That's going to depend on the type of credit card user that you are. I do have a credit card and I use it all of the time because I find that it's just easier to track my spending that way, but I consistently pay it off every Monday. Every Monday when I go in and do my budget, my credit card, whatever is owing on the credit card gets paid off once I put all of the expenses into my budget. If you're like me, if you're fine with the credit card and you don't have any issues in paying it off, then it can be a good way to track your income. If not, then maybe going to a debit card would be a better option for you. If you don't want credit cards, and you're thinking of either cutting up your card or cancelling your card after you finish paying it off, you need to think carefully about this. So if you're in Australia, there's no problem with getting rid of cards or cancelling cards. You can cut them up, do whatever you like once you finish paying them off just to get them out of your life if that's what you want to do. However, if you are in the US, you want to be thinking carefully about this because it sometimes can affect credit scores. If you haven't had the card for very long, only maybe a couple of years, then there's no real big impact to getting rid of it. But if you've had that card a long time and you've built up a lot of credit history of repayments onto that card, by cancelling it and getting rid of it, it can take that history out of your credit report. And that's not always a good thing. So sometimes it can be just beneficial to pay it off. And if you want it out of your life, just put it away somewhere where you're not going to use it again. So how many cards should you have? Again, this is going to depend on your lifestyle and how you use your credit card. Generally, I think people only usually need one card. Sometimes when you're in a relationship, you might have two cards, one for your personal use and one as a joint card with your partner. But having multiple cards really does you no benefit. Having multiple cards means that it's a lot to juggle at any one time. I know a lot of people want to play the debt game where they'll transfer the balance from one card onto the next and they might cancel or just not use that card, but very often they'll keep it and they'll have debts accumulated on multiple cards. Again, you don't want to do that. One is more than enough, two if you have one joint with your partner. And if you are using one card and you're paying it off, try and choose one that either has a really low interest rate or if you're going to use the rewards program that comes with it, have a look at how much you actually have to spend to get those rewards and whether you can play that game. I personally don't have a credit card with a rewards program because there's not a lot of great ones here in Australia. And the ones that do usually have quite high interest rates and, and I'm not interested, I just want something simple with a low interest rate that I can pay off each week. Okay, so you've paid off your card, you've chosen to keep one, what now? If you have paid it off in full, now you need to decide, like I said before, whether you're going to keep using it but use it mindfully and pay it off each week or each month depending on how often you get paid, or you're going to switch to a debit card which can be useful for some people, or whether you're going to stop using your card completely. I think it's a little bit difficult in today's day and age to not have any sort of credit or debit card because most of our purchases are online or it's just easy to tap and go. These 
these days rather than pay cash. I'm not a fan of the whole cash budget system anyway because I just find it very hard to track that way. But it goes without saying, don't rack up any more debt than you can afford to pay off each month or each week and use your card mindfully. I hope you've enjoyed this video and found it helpful. Thanks so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Take care and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.